Hey cruisers, welcome, welcome to YouTube. So good to see everybody here. We're doing a little bit of a YouTube live this Thursday night, just randomly popping up in the middle of the week. We were like, you know what? Let's do it. We've got time. We've got time on our hands. Let's go say hi to our cruise loving peeps and answer some cruise questions and see how everybody's doing. Samir and Kristen came in with a really good question today about princess cruises and their minimum age of 16 in a cabin. And Mike and Cheryl answered back right away that princess likes to stick to that rule so you can't divide the kids up. So it's a little bit tricky there. So it sounds like, Samir, that is the answer. I personally did not know the answer to that one, but sounds like princess is sticking to it. How's everybody doing tonight? Do we have any Patreon community friends here in the chat? Do we have any backstage crew? If we do, type crew. Hello, Tony G. Hi, Argooty, Tam Carb, Michelle, Holly, I see you. Vicky's going on her cruise. Vicky, I'm sorry about the weather in Texas right now. It's pretty cold. So pack your chilly weather stuff. Not that I need to tell you that. You've probably done your research. Hi, Becky. Congratulations on your good cruise deal on Cunard. Cunard. When you guys hear the podcast tomorrow, special podcast dropping tomorrow, you'll see why I say Cunard and Cunard. Hello, hi Chi. How are you doing? I see you there. Hi, Diana. Let's see who our Patreon community members are tonight. Of course, we've got Holly in the house. Holly is also a frequent flyer over on Amazon Live. Diana Schultz is in the house. Mike and Cheryl, Dale, Bruce Cruz. Hey, Bruce, I've missed you. Hello, meow, hiss, purr, scratch. Good to see ya. Uh, <laughs> oh, Bill, I know, I hear you. Oh, Becky, that's okay, yeah. We need to get you over to Patreon from Facebook because I can't put, I can't access everybody's names on the Facebook supporter program to put here on the feed. So I'd really rather you be a, um, a supporter on Patreon than Facebook so I can see who you are. That's the main reason. Wait a minute, you guys. You gotta say hi to Carnival Drew. You guys, Drew is a, um, he is basically, are you, what is your title these days, Drew? He's, he's above being a BDM for Carnival, but Drew supports travel advisors at Carnival Cruise Line. And he is the coolest dude. And we have a favorite cocktail together, the Spicy Paloma at Fuego and Long Beach. And so we always have this like shared inside Carnival joke. Um, but Carn uh, Carnival is very lucky to have Drew. He's a sweetheart and has a wonderful, beautiful family and he has a real legacy at Carnival. Hi Drew, thanks for being here. It always makes me very happy when you pop in. I know, Vicky. Bad weather. Who cares, right? Oh my gosh, Emily. Congrats on the new baby girl. How presh. That's so awesome. Hi, Phyllis. My Texas crew is here. Bill Bayungo is our is in our Patreon community too. Who else do I have? Mike and Cheryl said Toronto in the house. I love it. I love it. Bear Bull Cruz and his backstage crew. Yay. All right, let's get in with those questions. If you do have a question, if you can possibly type question at the beginning in bold or all caps, I mean, that helps, but we'll find them either way. Marty Stepanski, one of our top engagers on Facebook, by the way. Marty said, question with our set dining time in the MDR and Princess, if we eat somewhere else, do you need to notify them? You really don't need to notify them. Um, you can as a courtesy, like if you know, say you're going to do specialty the next night on Princess, you can say, hey guys, just want to let you know, give up our table tomorrow. We're going to be at Crown Girl. You can, but you don't have to because they actually can see where you are. They know where you are. We have a new subscriber. I want to welcome Hamid. Hamid, please let me know if I pronounced that correctly and welcome and thank you for subscribing. We get a cool little like pop-up thing when you guys subscribe, which is really neat. So hello. Oh, cool. That's Michelle works for an interline agency in British Columbia. Awesome. Um, we've got lots of good questions coming in tonight. Yay. Just Jake says, uh, hey, Sherry, which cruise line would you recommend for Alaska and why? Just Jake, what I normally tell people about Alaska is if you're an established cruiser and you have a favorite cruise line that you cruise with all the time, maybe it's Carnival, maybe it's Royal Caribbean, maybe it's Princess, maybe it's Holland America. If that cruise line goes to Alaska, you're probably going to be happiest if you cruise with the line you love the most. If not, if not, I would probably suggest Holland America or Princess 
if you like a quieter cruise experience. If you like a more lively cruise experience, I would probably try Royal Caribbean or Norwegian or Carnival for a more fun and lively experience. But Princess and Holland America are gonna cater to an older demographic, classical Alaska cruising experience, where Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, a little more high, um, high activity levels, but the ships are gonna feel a little more crowded too. So you're gonna, you've got those trade-offs. Karen said, when are we gonna see you in a cowboy hat? Karen, if you go to Instagram to the saved highlights, I have a highlight called Farm Life. And I have a cowboy hat video in there, but more cowboy hats coming. It's just that it's winter-ish weather right now, so I've been more like in jackets, raincoats, stuff like that. But yeah, the, the cowboy hats are real and I have like five. Yay, Phyllis is going on her first cruise to Alaska. Yay is right, Phyllis. That is the bestest. Aw, welcome back. How was Carnival Venezia, Mary Ellen? And let's settle the debate. Since if we still have Carnival Drew in the house and some Carnival Cruisers, how do we say Venezia? Venezia. Venezia, Venezia, Venezia. Phonetically spell it out in the chat. Let's have some fun here. Karen said, yeehaw. Hi, Jessica, I see you. Danny D, oh yeah, Danny D. I love the Majestic Princess too. The best. Thank you, Tam Carp, for encouraging everybody to hit the like button tonight. That is actually really super duper helpful. So guys, this live stream, even though we did it a little bit early tonight, our Tuesday night live streams through the end of 2023 are gonna stay 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern. So if this was a little early for you, I apologize. It just needed to be this way for our schedule tonight, but Tuesdays we're gonna go later because I know people are getting off work. Secretary Weber, Weber Davis, hello. Any thoughts about Norwegian Aqua coming out in 2025? I'm quite confident it's gonna be amazing. I'm still trying to catch up on Viva and Prima, so I don't have any major thoughts just yet, but I'll keep you posted. And I'm really excited that we've been able to do a little bit more with Norwegian this year. We just got off Norwegian Escape, and Norwegian is a great cruise option. And it's funny because their cruise experiences are so different across the ships and the itineraries. There can be, you can do a party cruise with Norwegian, you can do an upscale cruise with Norwegian. There's something for everyone on Norwegian. So we're gonna be hopefully experiencing more of Norwegian in the coming years. And I'll keep you posted on, on uh, Aqua. Okay. So Jessica says it's Venezia or Venezia, Venezia, Venezia. How do we feel? Okay, so then Carnival Drew works for Carnival. Let's see what he says. Venezia. Did I say it right, Drew? Venezia. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Venezia. Which is pretty much what Jessica was saying. Venezia. But but see, Car but see, Drew, he no, he kept the, the S in there, not the Z. Venezia, not Zia. Venezia. Interesting. Um, Jessica Romero says, when is your next cruise? Any plans for Jubilee? Maybe, nothing booked. Working on it. Hopefully something out of Galveston. Marion said, you say the T that isn't there. Ah, Venezia. Venezia. Did I get it right, Drew? Yeah? All right. Thank you, Dina Mo said, I love the Holly Jolly side. Got it at uh, Michael's a couple years ago. It's cute, isn't it? Oh, okay, Drew said I nailed it. Venezia, I'm an official Italian. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh. Okay, yay, more questions. Julie H has a question. Is there a major difference between traveling with a birth certificate versus a passport? Is there a difference in embarkation line, wait times? Uh, it depends on the cruise line, but sometimes, yes, even on debarkation, there can be a difference. I don't want to discourage you if you have to do the birth certificate thing, you have to do it, but it's much better if you can get a passport. Um, debarkation line, different line, almost always for birth certificates than passports. Embarkation, depending on the line, sometimes you'll breeze right on and sometimes not. Hi, Roy. <laughs> Dale says, like when you pronounce pizza with a T, pizza, P-I-T-Z-A. <laughs> I know, I love it. Is it Cheryl's birthday today? Today, today, did I miss this? See, this is the chat moves so fast in here. Let me let me pop out the chat so I can see it better. Carmen, Carmen Bailey said, question, embarkation day options other than the buffet for food. Carmen, it depends on the cruise ship you're going on. Um, some cruise lines, they open the main dining rooms 
for lunch. A carnival doesn't, but for carnival, you could do like guys burgers on day one or something like that, right? Like you could go do, you could go do a, a free dining venue that's special, but not paid on carnival. Um, on princess main dining room all the way, although the buffets on princess don't tend to be that crowded. Um, on Norwegian, if you're going on Norwegian, I would say main dining room all the way day one. We did the main dining room on Norwegian Escape, and man, was it nice. We were like four-course meal. It was like tomato bisque, and then I had like a Philly cheesesteak sandwich and a salad and a little creme brulee. It was like really relaxing and peaceful on Norwegian because the buffet on Norwegian's, um, on Escape can be really busy. So it depends on whether or not you really need to dodge it, Carmen, um, but yeah. It kind of depends. Okay, um, Niala's babe one. What are my thoughts about people being turned away due to that cruise being overbooked? That, I heard about that on Royal Caribbean and I cannot believe what a terrible offer they made those people. I was disgusted by that. Um, they overbooked, uh, I think it was in Australia. They overbooked, what was it? Odyssey, what ship was it? I don't know. People showed up to the cruise port and they're like, sorry, we probably don't have a cabin for you because you booked a guarantee. Oh, you can hang out and see if a cabin opens up or we'll give you a 25% future cruise credit and a refund. Oh, heck no. Those people, I'm sorry, but that's really, that's just bad, bad. Those people should have gotten a refund and a 100% future cruise credit because if you're going to overbook, you better do a little more like the airlines do. That's not cool at all. I think it's not cool at all. And I don't get I don't get mad about much here, honey. I forgot to give this to you. I saw that today and I was like, "No, not appropriate response." Nope. Sorry. I'm editorializing big time. Oh, Quantum of the Seas. Thanks Karen. Thanks Alfred. Oh, I was so mad. Lamecha Chamblin said, hey, tell me about the key. Royal Caribbean's key is an interesting program where you can up, you can buy an upcharge program that gets you like internet access and a few perks on boarding day and some exclusive hours. Generally speaking, I do not approve of or endorse the key because most people don't take advantage of the full offers within it. Look at it. To, if you think you're going to really use all that stuff, great. If not, just buy the internet package and spend your money elsewhere. Nice. Jessica Romero says, sailing out of Galveston mid-January on Jubilee. Staying at the Harbor House night before need tips for Galveston. Jessica, I haven't spent any time in Galveston yet, but um, people are telling me, and I will tell you, we, we took an Uber or a Lyft from the cruise port to the airport after. It was a stressful experience because the Ubers and Lyfts were very slow. So if you're going to do Uber or Lyft, you need to give yourself lots of time and absolutely under no circumstances should you book a flight before 12 or preferably more like 2 p.m. out of Houston if you're Ubering from Galveston to Houston. Um, but there's so much to do. Go to the seawall in Galveston. Some people go to Moody Gardens in Galveston. It's like an amusement park. It's a little bit expensive, but it gets really, really good reviews. And when I go to Galveston, I think I will go to Moody Gardens, take my son there. It looks like a really neat place to go during the holidays. So I would recommend that you prioritize that. Um, another thing that I wanna do, and I've said this before on live streams before, um, but when I go to Galveston, I, I have a personal connection because we watch this show called Restoring Galveston. It's about this adorable couple who's now a family that restores these old houses to their former glory in Galveston. And they opened an ice cream shop called the Cordray Drugstore. So when we go to Galveston, we're full on going to the Cordray Drugstore. But there's so much to do. Um, and I'll let you know later. Uh, once we've done it. Dinamo said, heard lots of noise about long wait times for birth certificate users from disembarkation on carnival cruises out of Galveston. Yeah, it's not ideal, guys. I highly recommend you get a passport. Michelle DeGroote said, Holland America was famous for bumping people, but Royal, that's just weird. I would have been so mad if I flew in. And of Holland America, of all lines, more premium. I know. Marty said, can you imagine paying thousands for the flight and not being able to go? That's why I say that their reimbursement offer was unacceptable. And I don't, I don't believe that cruisers are entitled to this and that when something goes wrong. We're all, we all sign and agree to a passenger contract, but not getting a stateroom is not cool. Overbooking and overselling is just straight up greedy and uncool, in my opinion. And I just 
don't think it's cool. So, yeah. Um, Jacob and Savannah, what transport service do we use at a Port Everglades? Yeah, pretty much always um, just Uber or Lyft at a Port Everglades specifically because it's usually I stay at a hotel close to the port. Uh, Tam Carp says, I want to try Princess. Yay, you should. Princess is an awesome line. Part of the Carnival Corporation, more premium than Carnival, though, more of an older demographic, but still fun and great. Abby Ellis said, question, is a three to four day cruise worth it or is it better to do a seven day longer? For me, I, I cannot get relaxed on a three to four day cruise. Highly recommend you go seven days. If you must start with a shorter cruise, do a five night, but try to do seven Dale White said, something to check out when flying into Galveston is Galveston Saltwater Moms. I've never rode with them, but I've seen great reviews. Yes. Dale is talking about a, a woman who owns a business, who runs her business through Facebook. She provides transportation to and from the airports to the Galveston cruise port, and she's wonderful. You do need to DM her on Facebook in order to get information on transport. But yes, yes, a thousand times yes. I've heard so many good things about her. Thank you, 775. I like our decor too. We had some fun with it this year. Lori Camp said, I'm going out of Mobile next March for my first Platinum Cruise. Are there specific sites to see in Mobile since we're getting into town the day before? I've not cruised out of Mobile, Alabama. Anybody know anything about that to help Lori out? What do you guys think? Hmm. Hmm. I've not been, but hopefully we can get you some information. Marty S. says, in Galveston, the historical strand is walking distance from the Harbor House Hotel. Lots of good shopping and great food. So we've got, so we've got people saying there's the Harbor House Hotel in Galveston. We've got people saying the Tremont is good. So the Harbor House looks like it's at Pier 21. And the Tremont, I don't know where that is, but that one also gets great reviews. I really want to go try some different hotels out down there. Let's plug in prices for the Harbor House. Let's just pretend we were cruising middle of January, like Jessica, and we wanted to stay at the Harbor House for a night. How much is the Harbor House for a night mid-January? I'm just playing around with the prices here. Limited availability. Book now before rooms sell out. Of course, it's taking forever to search. Okay, well, well, we'll pick that conversation up later. Randy Sims. Hi, Randy. Randy and I have been chatting it up on Instagram lately. It's so good to see you. Your family is so adorable, Randy. Randy said, hi, thanks for all your tips on our recent Thanksgiving cruise out of Galveston. Yay, you're welcome. I'm so glad you enjoyed Regal with your sweet boys. I loved seeing your photo. Thank you for sending that to me. And I loved your dress, as you know. Oh, my gosh. Love and want. Daniel Mitra said, when you travel with a backpack plus carry-on only, do you drop your carry-on bag at the terminal on embarkation or bring it with you? We do. We have done both. We have sometimes kept our carry-on with us. Sometimes we check it. Sometimes we'll check even the backpack. We'll check because we don't want to be weighed down. Generally speaking, we check the carry-on and keep the backpack though, generally. Danny, Danny D said question. Do you think you would consider trying MSC or have you leaving on um, in less than three weeks on board MSC World Europa from Barcelona for a Christmas cruise? We've been Danny on two MSC cruises and we absolutely loved them both, but this was pre-pandemic. We've been on Meraviglia. We did the Europe cruise. We did Rome to round trip Rome. Yeah, round trip Rome on Meraviglia in the yacht club. One of our favorite cruises ever in the Yacht Club. And then we did MSC Seaside to the Caribbean um, in the Aria experience, which basically puts you in a balcony but gives you some perks. Phenomenal. The food is different. There's some food that's like really great, like the pizza and the buffet salads, exceptional. But the main dining room food is going to be more European. Even in the Yacht Club, like fish was served with skin on. There's just things that if you've traveled in Europe and you're used to the European experience, you're going you're gonna to be like, okay, I get it. Um, but I, if I were to go back on MSC, I would lean very heavily towards the Yacht Club because I just think it's the best. Uh, Michael L. needs suggestions on where to stay at the Miami airport, guys. Top, bo uh, pop some Miami airport hotels in the chat because I have not stayed at the Miami airport. I stayed at an A-loft in Brickle in Miami last time I was there, but I think we can do better. Julie H. said, question, best remedies for motion sickness, first cruise, worried I'll be sick all the entire time. 
go to your doctor, get a prescription is the best. Second best is over the counter bonine patches, um, bonine pills, patches, anything you can get OTC, just go prepared. The herbal remedies and the wristbands are wonderful, but you probably need medication, Julie. If you are prone to motion sickness normally in life, you may get sick. If not, you are very unlikely to get sick. Even if you get sick on small boats in the ocean, that means nothing about your your likelihood of getting sick on a ship. I get extremely sick, like on sport fishing boats, extremely sick, but I don't get motion sick at all on cruise ships for the most part. And I don't get car sick much. So Julie, it just depends on you. Um, Niala's a babe said, which is the best Disney ship? Thinking about cruising on one next year, 2025. I haven't cruised Disney, but I do have some creators I recommend you follow. Follow Griff and Alyssa. They definitely cruise on Disney. And also, um, Yellow Productions just went on Disney with a baby. He's great. He's not a cruise content creator, but check him out. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome and thank you for subscribing. Julie H., I think I got Julie's question. Okay, Sherry Weber, going on Disney Dream next week, any must-do activities on the ship? Oh, I'm so sorry, Sherry, I haven't been on Disney. So we've got to get some Disney suggestions in the um, chat. Oh, yay, Danny D., you're in the Yacht Club. Okay, tell me how it goes. I want to hear from you when you're done. Carnival Drew, you stayed at the Tremont, super cool spot with lots to do within walking distance. The Hotel Galvez along the seawall is good too. So I feel like I need to just go stay in all the hotels in Galveston for like two weeks. Not going to happen. But yeah, some good stuff in Galveston. Yeah. Hotel Galvez and Tremont. Excellent, guys. Bye, Carmen. You have a good one. Um, that's not a bad price, Marty, for the Harbor House. Thank you for looking that up for me. My computer froze up a little bit there. So good job. Okay, Luz Zaragoza says, hi, looking for information about travel insurance, going on a cruise this coming Sunday. Um, if you're going on a cruise this coming Sunday and you booked with a travel agent, you need to contact your travel agent to get something added to that booking. There are certain things that you will not be covered for potentially because you're buying the, the cruise insurance this late. Um, you could try AIG for travel, Allianz, A-L-L-I-A-N-Z, or booking directly with your cruise line, loose. But if you booked with a travel agent, you should ask them. Yvonne, Yvonne Feld said, use your tips on my recent Japan trip. We stayed at the Hyatt Regency and hello, gorgeous. Thank you so much for the tip. I get emotional, Yvonne. Cannot handle it. I love Japan cruising so much. And yes, the Hyatt Regency in Yokohama. Thank you, Karen Clay, for that recommendation. I, I've never experienced anything like it. There were pajamas in our room. There were drawers full of amenities. And I paid no more than I would pay for a holiday inn down the road where I live. They're, these hotels are just insane. They're amazing. I loved that area. And I'm so glad that you had fun, Yvonne, making my heart sing. I think we, Mr. Cruise to me and I have decided we could just live on Diamond Princess permanently. <laughs> I mean, we are obsessed with um, Japan cruising. Just obsessed. Michelle DeGroote said, you won't be able to purchase cancellation insurance this late. Medical, you'll be fine. Thank you, Michelle, for that information. Thank you so much for clarifying. Michelle works for an interline travel agency. Thank you, hun. Okay. We've got some good um, Miami hotel suggestions coming in, guys. So take a look in the chat there. I see one from Bear Bull Cruising and I think some several other ones. Okay. Um, Tam, Tam Carp said, question, Sherry, are you interested in being a travel agent for cruises? No, Tamacarp. 
That is not my career path. I have um, done some travel agent training and I think it's very useful. However, I don't want to sell travel for a living. It's just not a good fit for me. Had I done that from the beginning, I probably would, it probably would have been the right path. But now I prefer content creation and I've partnered with a travel agent partner to refer our community to because for me on a day to day basis, that's not the career that I want to go into. I have the utmost respect and admiration though for travel agents and we are very pro travel agent anytime you hear me talking on our podcast about travel agents though we're like basically telling people all the virtues of working with a a travel agent it's just not right for me and guys please be nice to your travel agents i they work their butts off and people there most people are very good to their travel agent but people can be very cruel and demanding of travel agents and I just remind you be realistic be kind have high expectations of your travel agent communicate those expectations to your travel agent but please for the love of God be kind and realistic Bessie Santos said when is the best time to get insurance when booking a cruise immediately when you book is best um, Marty Stepanski said AIG is great not only for pricing but customer service that is a fact I've used AIG travel guard many times for booking my travel insurance Lose um, travel insurance carries many different types of coverages, medical probably being the most important so that if something were to happen to you, you would have coverage outside of the U.S. Because in the United States, most of us have plans that work only within the U.S., sometimes only within the system within with, you know, where we live. And so you need something to cover you outside of the U.S. And medical is a big part of it. Yeah. Oren G. Tracheria said, La Vigna in Galveston, homemade pasta, cozy, delish, near the 1894. Oh, yum, Oren. I'm going to have to make a note of that on my Galveston wish list of things to do. That sounds wonderful. I actually have a list of things I want to do in Galveston. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that right now, Oren. What is it called? La Vigna, Italian food on it. Writing that down. Okay, yeah, you guys think that you're getting tips for yourself, but really, this is all about me. Just kidding. (laughs) Lori Camp said, what's different about going through a regular travel agent as opposed to a vacation planner associated with the particular cruise line? Excellent question. So personal vacation planners with Carnival, vacation planners with other lines like Princess, many of them have their own agents. Um, If you establish a relationship with them, it can be an excellent way to go, especially if you're the kind of person who wants to book your own air and handle your own types of travel. The difference is that your personal vacation planner with that line isn't going to handle things like air for you, pre-cruise hotel, unless it's bundled with that cruise line. They're going to handle the cruise, right? And the insurance, and they can sell you only the insurance associated with the cruise line. A travel agent can sell you every brand of travel um, insurance. They can sell you every brand of cruise. But if you're a loyalist and you cruise with just one line, then you are going to want to use a personal vacation planner. That works for a lot of people, and some of them swear by it. I have um, a really good PVP with Carnival. Her name is Tina. She's precious, and she is phenomenal and her response time is insanely good some people just really luck out with that but they only sell that line so good question Lori. what a great question mike and cheryl said pvps work for the cruise line and travel agents are licensed for all cruise lines excellent synopsis yes exactly Uh, Michelle has a point about cancellation insurance that i'd like to read out loud here she says um Cancellation insurance would need to be purchased on or before your final payment date. If you bought within the cancellation penalty window, it needed to be bought at the time of booking. Excellent. I know, Jessica, I'd be happy to share with you my Galveston ideas, but on my Facebook page, if you go to cruisetipstv.com, facebook.com, sorry, facebook.com slash cruisetipstv, search Galveston, there's a post in there where I asked for tips on Galveston and people went crazy. They put like hundreds of ideas. Go look at that. Um, Aaron M says best place to stay in San Francisco cruising with Carnival to Alaska in June in 10 days. Personally, Aaron, I never stay in San Francisco because I don't like it there anymore. It's gotten scary to me. So I stay outside the city limits and drive in. Um, 
so I don't know. I don't know where to, to point you for San Francisco, but if anybody has any favorite San Fran hotels, please type them in. Lee Darrow said, have you ever done an episode on realistic expectations for a travel agent? Yes, we did a podcast on it. If you go to the Cruise Tips TV Unplugged podcast, wherever you listen and search the episodes for travel agent, we did an episode all about it. Thank you, Harvey. Harvey said, I found your channel recently, liked it, liked it and subscribed, found Yellow Productions and uh, a bit before and enjoy both. Thank you very much, Harvey H., and welcome. I like Yellow Productions. He's a great guy. He has, I think, a corporate job that takes him out to travel, and he goes to Japan a lot, so I like his Japan content a lot. And he recently went on a cruise. It was weird to see a tie-in. I'd never seen him cruise before. I was like, oh, cool. He's a great guy. Israel Camacho said, wife and I have never used the guaranteed balcony option on trip. Had a friend mention that guarantees can be bumped if they're sold out or oversold. Is this true? When we sell icon of the seas. <laughs> oh, Israel, it just happened. And yes, you can get bumped and you could end up with a really bad cabin. I am no longer a fan of the guarantee, but you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay on this one. But yes, they can bump you. And yes, you can end up in a cabin next to a noisy area. It's not ideal. Danny D, give us some San Francisco recommendations. Yay. Okay. We have great questions tonight. Maybe Thursday night is a good time for live streams too. Just Jake said, um, planning in February, Galveston, Harmony of the Seas, have a flight at a hobby later in the evening, plan to explore Galveston. I heard the cruise stop. Does... It, does luggage storage review the cruise stop? I don't know what that is. Is that a place where you can store your luggage or are you saying just at the terminal? One thing that some people do just, Jake, is they book an excursion with the cruise line. If their flight is later in the day, they book an excursion that takes them to like the, um, the NASA area in Houston and does a Houston tour and a Galveston tour. You could do that. I don't know what that is though, the cruise stop. I don't know what you mean, just Jake. Maybe I'm just reading it weird. Okay, guys, do we have um, do we have all the questions answered? Um, Danny said, don't stay downtown. Stay near Fisherman's Wharf. Lee said, I love our travel agent that you recommended years ago. Used her ever since. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Lee. Okay, bearable cruising. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, I'm. it's not the whole city. It's just that it's like there's pockets where we need people to be safe, right? Michelle said, pick your own cabin number. Uh, Bear Bowl Cruising said, Regency Embarcadero Center. Okay. Hi, Bill. Good to see you. Thank you, Daniel Mitra, for getting those likes. Danny D said, downtown San Francisco is very scary, and I don't even go there. If you stay by Fisherman's Wharf, you're closer to the port, you can stay in the marina. Yeah, the marina, the port, all that is really beautiful. But downtown, that whole district has gotten really scary. Vicky said, question, Icon of the Seas with 7,500 guests. Can you see a future with a ship carrying 10,000 people? I can, and I don't want to be on it. <laughs> I'm not into it. Vicky also, Bon Voyage. Have a wonderful cruise, darling. Okay, guys. We're going to wrap up, and we're going to go over to Amazon Live after this. If you enjoy this live stream, but maybe you feel like the chat moves a little too fast, and you'd still like to keep chatting with us, Come on over to Amazon Live. We're going to do a little shopping live stream there. It'll be a short one, probably 30 minutes or so, but we have a lot of really great travel items in there, including a GoPro and tons of packing supplies. So come on over in about five minutes there. Let me see what um, Sherry is saying about the cruise stop. Sherry said, I use the cruise stop once to store my bags. It's a convenience store. It worked out well. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sherry. She said the only problem was that the elevator was broken and we had to carry our luggage up a lot of steps. Okay, thank you so much for that tip. Jake, your flight home is late out of hobby. Oh, hobby. Okay, yeah, there you go. Cruise Stop is getting good reviews, Jake, from Sherry. John stayed at Hotel Zoe, walking distance to the port and the wharf. That's in San Fran, right? Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, guys, good stuff. You're welcome, Jessica. Bessie, thank you for that. Hi, Shanna. 
Shanna Leonard said, cruising on my first cruise off the West Coast in February to Catalina and Ensenada, any excursion? Oh, yes. Shanna Leonard, in Catalina, I recommend renting a golf cart and just tooling around the island yourself. It's so much fun. And in Ensenada, definitely do not just get off the ship and walk around there. It is not a good idea. There's nothing to do within walking distance for the most part. Highly recommend you book an excursion to La Bufadora, which is the blowhole. They're very inexpensive. You can book it through your cruise line or go wine tasting or horseback riding. That's what I would do in Ensenada. But rent a golf cart in Catalina. It's so much fun. Or you could just walk around in Catalina. Catalina is a good just walk around place. Mike and Cheryl said, please, 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 GoPro 12. Is it the GoPro 12 that's on deal tonight, Mike? Let me check. Hang on, let me see if it's the 11 or 12. Um, I don't think the 12 is on deal. I think it's the 11, the creator bundle of the 11. I think the 12s fell off deal. You didn't get it during the sale, huh, Mike? Shoot, darn it. Thank you, Niala. You're welcome, Jake. Happy birthday, Cheryl. Okay, guys, we'll see you over at Amazon Live in less than five minutes. Link is down there. Come hang out with us, and then we'll see you next Tuesday night, 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern for another live stream. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye. Cruiser of the week. <laughs>